right. Well, it's funny how um, a show comes together um, because um, before Ming Foon was confirmed, uh, we'd received a column uh, we're publishing, also published on um, Bash, Bash, Brash, Brash, Bassett Hyde. Uh, I think it's in that order. Um, from Dr Michael Bassett, former Labor Cabinet Minister, Professor of History, uh, someone cancelled by the New Zealand Herald because, like uh, Ming Foon, they don't like publishing views that don't uh, accord with their world view. Uh, but Michael has submitted, and we have published, uh, a column called Our Media in Election Year. And I think it's an interesting piece as the election approaches about what sort of stories you are being told and what sort of narrative is being presented to you on the issues that clearly, by polls that have been published, do matter you matter to you. Issues like co-governance and now this, quite frankly, crazy idea of a Truth and Reconciliation Commission as put forward by the Human Rights Commission, which says it is acting in accordance with the United Nations declarations which we have signed up to. Can you expect your media, your pub, largely public funded, publicly funded mainstream news media to accurately tell these stories and indeed to accurately publish your reaction in the election season? Well, to answer that question and discuss these things in general, we are joined now by Dr Michael Bassett. Uh, Michael, nice to talk to you again. Welcome back to the platform. Morning. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Now, we just want to Good. maybe get you a little closer to that uh, phone. Michael, do you think we are going to get or are getting from mainstream news media impartial, uh, balanced and useful coverage of events in this country in the run-up to an important election? Overall, the answer is no, but a few people do struggle to do it. I mean, the old journalistic ethic still seems to apply to a few. Um, I, I watch the Herald, of course, every day, and uh, TV1 and TV3, and uh, all of them have uh, some people who are uh, okay. But across the board, uh, particularly the newspapers, are uh, very conscious of their um, obligation to the government that they're wanting to milk uh, money from, taxpayers' money, uh, for the Public Interest Journalism Fund. And uh, I don't think uh, across the board you could say that the mainstream newspapers are uh, going to give people a fair shake in the run-up to the election. A decision's just simply been made, I think, amongst the editors that uh, to hell with caution, uh, we'll hope that uh, Labor gets re-elected and if not, well, maybe we'll go down with the sinking ship. Mm. I wonder, Michael, if that partisanship really can be directed, directly related to the Public Interest Journalism Fund and New Zealand On Air funding and other things. A and I might add the last round of uh, PIJF funding is just finished, that, that well has run dry. Whether or not, Michael, it simply is, and I look in particular at the coverage post the floods, at, well, during the floods, the witch hunt against Wayne Brown by um, certain journalists in Auckland, whether or not it isn't that just our journalists have lost the art of recognising that their political views and desires have got nothing to do with them doing their job. Well, I think there's an element of truth in that. Uh, Simon Wilson in the uh, Herald is just extraordinary. I mean, he seems to think that somehow or other his views on Len, on Wayne Brown and on uh, uh, just about anything are uh, worthy of uh, uh, being trotted through the pages of the Herald. Uh, simplistic nonsense, most of it. And um, it, you get that uh, more and more, I think, from uh, newspaper journalists these days. So I think you're right that uh, there's a big element of uh, journalists just simply thinking that uh, whatever the medium is that they're working for uh, is a platform for them to air their views. Mm. This is in a context, Michael, and a cultural context where we are having quite some debate over how to have a debate. And I've just finished interviewing Ming Foon on a report published by the Human Rights Commission that in itself admits we have not published or given any airing to views that we didn't agree with. 
<laughs> Good heavens. Uh, and well, I'll, I'll just... That, I'll, I'll that just says re- all, doesn't it? Well, I'll read it to you. I'll, I'll read it to you because it was so notable. Um, it was so notable in the way that, way that it was um, it was put and deliberately put, I think. Um, and I'm just going to find it. Sorry, sorry. I'm just I'm just pulling it up. Um, management and accountability. It basically says, look, um, if anyone said anything we thought was racist, we didn't publish what they said because we don't want to perpetuate racism, which seems to me... Oh, yeah, here it is. The Commission um, most, mostly received constructive feedback on the um, co-papa of racism. But we also received a small minority of feedback that displayed racism in some cases. The feedback displayed abuse towards the co-papa and the tangata whenua as well as ethnic communities and the Commission itself. This included content that denied the existence of racism. So people who said there isn't racism in New Zealand uh, insisted that people needed to get over past events, objected to New Zealand being called Aotearoa and considered uh, existing ethnic, social and economic uh, inequities the fault of people who experience them. The Commission has chosen not to give space to these voices in the report. This ensures that the voices and experience of those who have experienced racism are at the forefront of the report. The stance is supported by research, which has found that showing people their negative views are not violated or consensually shared can reduce prejudice. The Commission urges the government to take a similar approach in developing and implementing the anti-racism plan while ensuring that there are supporting communications plans. And it would seem to me that attitude, Michael, that we simply do not entertain, publish or engage with people who we, whose views we find problematic... That seems to be applied also to journalism these days and mainstream journalism and indeed all forms of communication and debate in this country. Yes, and sadly, when it comes to a question of race, New Zealanders are pretty naive. Um, I spent uh, my young years in the United States in the South where uh, the great uh, you know, struggle for uh, black rights was going on and I've got a pretty good appreciation of racism. I don't think our people, I don't think our journalists, by and large, understand what racism is. And uh, you hear all sorts of people just lashing out and saying, oh, that's racist, when in fact it's nothing more than a legitimate comment. Uh, It doesn't indicate any sort of um, anything pejorative about uh, uh, Maori or uh, uh, people who are non-white and it's usually, of course, uh, that's the, where the criticism comes. Uh, it's a criticism of Whitey against uh, Maori. Yeah. Um, in that context, then, Michael, if we have government departments and a government that doesn't engage uh, in real debate or real discussion, we have a news media that is not a particularly interested in giving us a broad view of the world. How can New Zealanders make well-informed and meaningful decisions uh, about what to do when they walk into the polling booth on October the 14th? Well, they can't really. I mean, uh, it's, it's it, given the nature of the debate and the censoring and, and these commissions, I mean, the Human Rights Commission seems to have gone doolally uh, and Ming Foon is completely out of his comfort zone. Uh, quite a good mayor of Gisborne, but he does not understand. I don't think he reads for a start. And uh, I have to assume that a large number of uh, people around the Human Rights Commission don't read either. Uh, if they did read, uh, they would understand that the debate is debate and it's got to be wide ranging. Uh, you cannot censor uh, half of the debate and uh, think that you're somehow or other assisting people make up their minds. Yeah, yeah, I get you, Michael. Oh, look, I thank you very much uh, for appearing. I thank you for the columns and all the columns you've written for the platform. They are well read and, and they are open and, and they are part of the debate that the country has. I thank you very much for your time. That is Dr Michael Bassett. Uh, his latest column on our media in an election year. Well worth a read. That is on uh, the opinions section.